Some people might say that I hate controller players, but that's not actually true. I love you guys. In fact, I love you so much that I'm going to be giving you 19 movement techniques that will make you a roller king. And the best part is you don't need Steam configs to do this. Nice. Meaning you can do this completely legally without any third party whatever. I'm going to be taking you from the flashiest of techniques all the way down to the more useful fundamentals. And once you start implementing these techniques into your game, you'll be able to stay alive longer, rotate faster, and find that you can put in more damage than you expected initially. So let's just get right into it. So let's start with moving while looting. Although there isn't a way to legitimately move around while looting without using configs on your controller, there are some methods which could be of use to you. For example, try hitting your jump button right as you want to loot a box in order to jump once while you're in the box. It may not seem like much, but it can actually save you from being killed if you're going for an armor swap. I have a second method for you that adds a little bit more movement as well, but the only downside is that you can only move forward. It is much easier to do this if you have paddles, and if not, then select the button puncher layout for your controller so it makes your right stick crouch. Turn on the double tap to sprint option in your controller settings, and when you're in a death box, you can double tap your left stick to sprint while looting. Obviously, this will make you move really fast, so to slow it down, you want to crouch while doing this. This should give you enough time to quickly loot whatever you want out of the death box, like an armor swap. If you are going to be doing this, I suggest you always have some space in your inventory so you don't have to waste your time dropping items. A skip jump is as the name implies. It lets you skip the slide animation while still getting the exact same speed boost that you would get from slide jumping. It literally saves 140 to 190 milliseconds of your time. In order to perform the skip jump, you need to have your weapon out, start sprinting, switch to your other weapon, then slide jump, but make sure to jump much sooner than you're used to. This cuts out the slide animation, but still gives you a speed boost. Keep in mind, you can't do this if you sprint over a certain threshold of time, which is the exact opposite of most other movement techniques. You can also do the skip jump without swapping your gun, but your frames would have to fluctuate a bit, because swapping your gun causes your frames to fluctuate, thereby making the skip jump more consistent. Skip jumping is very useful in gunfights as it changes your hitbox and makes you way harder to hit. It's also great if you're a shotgun player because you can obviously get up close instantly. And I also want to make a quick distinction because there is a difference between a skip jump and a fade slide, which is that the fade slide takes you farther while the skip jump is much faster but less flashy. So fade sliding or instant sliding was popularized by Fade. In his videos, he always managed to be faster than his opponents, which made him a puzzle for the Apex community back then. It wasn't until Moki Sniper made a video breaking down what Fade was actually doing that we actually got to realize what was happening. When fighting, people usually slide jump with their guns out, and to do that, they would need to take a minimum of 3 footsteps before the game lets them slide. So let's say you have your weapon holstered when you slide jump. It would be faster, but it would take you about 150 milliseconds to do a slide jump. But with Fade sliding, you would only need to start from a crouch to instantly slide jump at 120 milliseconds. The key is to slide jump while keeping your gun holstered, and then you pull out your gun at the peak of your slide jump. If you don't do that step, you'll only be able to shoot when you land. The timing has to be perfect so you can start shooting in the air. This basically gives you an instant slide and makes you very hard to hit when swinging players from cover, as you would spend much less time running through the open. As you already may know, because people talk about it all the time, tap strafing doesn't work on console. This is because of something called lurches that don't exist on the platform. Flex strafing is the closest thing to tap strafing on console. You can find uses for it on Octane's jump pad, Pathfinder Scrapple, and some other areas of the game. In order to perform a flick strafe, you're going to need to hit Octane's jump pad. Once you're in the air, your left stick has to be positioned hard towards whatever direction you want to go, so either left or right. Again, hard left or hard right, no in between, and once you're there, you'll have to flick your stick upward right as you press your jump button. This would give you a sort of pseudo tap strafe, and it's important to note that the momentum is still lost when using this, as opposed to tap strafing where you get to keep all your momentum. Flick strafing kind of plays off of air strafing, and Moki Sniper went as far as to say that at the core, it's just a jump in a new direction, very well timed with a sharp air strafe. 
Regardless of this, you can still use flick strafing to turn corners and be evasive in fights. You've probably seen people like Faye do this hundreds of times, and you probably think that you can't do a super glide on controller. But you're wrong. To perform this technique, you need to climb something, like a wall. This is also known as mantling. Right at the peak of mantling the wall so your climb animation, you want to hit the jump button and slide button at more or less the exact same time. Pointing your stick in any direction accelerates you towards that direction. This technique is probably the hardest to do in all of Apex, as it is so hard to get the timing right every time. So don't get discouraged if you don't get it immediately. However, while it is difficult for PC players, it is actually a lot easier to do the lower your FPS is, meaning that if you're a console player, you're going to be on 60 frames a second or lower, so, you know, it's usually easier for you if you want to start doing it. This is because the time window for hitting your buttons is very, very short. It's literally something like one or three frames. This means that console users who are capped at 60 FPS can perform a super glide that much more easily because they have to hit one frame out of 60 versus a PC player who has to hit one frame out of 240. Also, quick note, super gliding is very different from slide jumping off a ledge as the speed boost you gain from super gliding is significantly higher than the one you get from slide jumping. And also, having auto sprint on will actually make this easier to perform. Super jumps are performed on zip lines and work for both vertical and horizontal zip lines. These propel you much higher than a regular zip line jump. And in order to do a zip line jump, you need to press your interact button and then hit your jump button twice. As for the timing, you would need to wait a little bit before hitting your jump button the second time. This technique is super useful in zipline buildings and can help you surprise your enemies. It works best when paired with zipline strafing, as you can super jump from floor to floor like Fade. If you've ever wondered how Fade quickly switches from floor to floor in the zipline buildings, well, this technique is for you. Zipline strafing helps you dance along the zipline. You can do it a maximum of three times in a row before being kicked off. For zipline strafing, I strongly recommend not having terribly low sensitivity, and you perform a zipline strafe by holding down your interact button to connect to the zipline, jumping off the zipline, and then quickly looking at the zipline again and hitting the jump, all while your interact button is held down. Repeat the loop and it should look something like this. You should use both your thumbsticks to look towards the zipline. If you're too slow in reconnecting to the zipline, you're just gonna be kicked off. Hence why I said you shouldn't have a low sensitivity. You can perform this technique by timing your interact button clicks instead of holding it, but use whatever you find is more consistent. This technique helps you to quickly jump from floor to floor on a zipline building or just to be evasive on the zip. A hyper jump is essentially a double super jump. It gives insane height on horizontal ziplines. All you have to do is perform a super jump, then hit your interact button again, followed by your jump button. The timing has to be perfect on this, and you should hit the interact button the second time, right as you see it pop up on your screen. If you did it correctly, it should look something like this. Keep in mind though, while this is useful, it was a lot more useful before Pathfinder's zipline ultimate changes, which prevents him from setting up ziplines below 20 meters away from him. However, you can still make effective use of it. Elite jumping is one of the many zipline movement techniques which can be used to attain insane height and momentum. To perform an elite jump, simply slide towards a zipline. When you slide to the edge of the ledge, look to the opposite of the zipline and then look straight down. For a brief moment, your interact button should pop up, and when it does, you should perform a super jump by pressing your interact button and then your jump button twice. Doing this will send you flying into the sky and will make you very hard to hit. It can also be combined with legend abilities for an even crazier experience, and with some practice, you can do this on every zipline building. You can also do it coming from a diagonal. Mantle jumping is one of those things you probably have seen a lot of your favorite creators do recently, and it is a little bit similar to elite jumping that I showed you previously. And you would probably think that such a flashy looking technique wouldn't work on controller, but that's, that's where you're, you're wrong, wrong kiddo. kiddo. In order to perform the mantle jump, you need to understand how it works fundamentally. You see, to perform a super jump, you need ground contact. Now, being in a mantled state counts as ground contact. When you cancel a mantle, for a brief moment, it would still count as ground contact. In that small time window, you could hit a super jump and get sent into the air. So a mantle jump is essentially a combination of a canceled mantle and a super jump. So here's one way to do it. You ride a zipline up, you jump when your eye level is more or less at the height of the floor, Hold crouch into a mantle at the edge, then you cancel that mantle by pressing your crouch button or pulling your stick backward, then you flick your side stick downwards until you see the zipline indicator, 
and then you pull off a super jump, which we covered earlier. And if you didn't remember, that is hitting your interact button, followed by two jump button presses. This technique works on all zip lines, including Pathfinder zip lines. Do note that you can flick your stick up instead of down to get more height, although you risk hitting your head on the ceiling if you're inside of a building. If you're on a config, you can also combine this technique with a tap strafe after your super jump for an extra layer of finesse. I strongly advise having paddles or using the button layouts called ninja and having your jump and crouch on different buttons. This will make your life much easier when attempting mantle jumps. So to recap, grab the edge, cancel mantle, flick your sight down until zip indicator and then super jump. There are four ways to cancel the fall stun penalty in Apex Legends. The first one goes as follows. When falling from a height, climb a wall right before you hit the ground in order to remove the stun penalty and keep the speed. 2. If you land right where a wall and the ground will meet, you will not get the fall stun penalty. 3. The third way is if you mantle the edge of a wall right as you fall. This cancels the fall stun penalty, but you won't actually keep any speed. 4. The final and the best way to cancel the fall stun penalty is to position yourself in such a way that you hit the edge of the wall and slide off of it. This keeps all your velocity from the fall and can be performed on every wall, including Rampart's walls. This is one of the basic techniques that everyone should know how to do. To slide jump, simply run forward, then hit your slide button first, then after a little while, follow it by hitting your jump button. The proper timing is that after you hit your first slide jump, wait until your left hand goes down a second time, and then you can pull off a slide jump again. This helps you build a rhythm and avoid dead slides. I strongly recommend keeping your gun out of your hands if you can, so you can get the maximum momentum boost. This technique is very useful for rotating around the map quickly. To get the most out of bunny hopping, you want your crouch button to be bound to hold. When you have sliding momentum, maybe from a slide jump or a cannon or whatever, you hold your slide button and hit your jump button every time you want to hit the ground. You can spam it if you want, but timing your jump clicks perfectly will make you retain as much momentum as possible. And if you move your left analog stick ever so slightly in any direction, you'll begin to bunny hop in that desired direction. Be careful not to do this too fast or you will lose all of your momentum. This technique is especially useful for going around corners when being shot. You can also do this while healing to retain some momentum instead of being slowed down when using a healing item. Sliding right at the edge of a ledge gives you a speed boost, also known as edge boosting. To do this, simply run forward and hold your crouch button right at the very edge and then you get the speed boost which would slide you off the ledge. You can also slide jump after the edge to get an extra additional speed boost. Fundamentally, a straight wall bounce is a slide jump, mantle to the wall and then jump off of the wall. The time window for jumping off the mantle is quite large compared to all of the other movement techniques that we've covered, so you can take your time. But the faster you jump off of your mantle, the more efficient your wall jump will be. In order to do this, there needs to be enough space between you and the wall, else you wouldn't be able to temporarily mantle the wall but instead start climbing the wall, or you could end up just not connecting to the wall at all. I recommend about a 2-3 meter distance from the wall to get the best results. It's the same process if you wanted to do this diagonally, the only difference is you start running at an angle. Now, where it gets a bit tricky for most players is the parallel wall bounce. So let's take a look at how to do it properly. When running parallel to the wall, perform a slide jump, then flick your stick towards the wall, which will face you towards the wall and then give you that connection to the wall. And after that, just jump off of it. Simple as that. Wall bouncing saves you an incredible amount of time when rotating and also keeps you entertained. This may be easier on PC thanks to lurching, allowing you to add some movement inputs to correct your course while midair, but it is very much doable in controller as well as long as you use the proper technique. This one combines wall bouncing and movement. After making a wall bounce off of a wall, immediately move your analog stick forward again to jump over the wall. It is best to approach this from an angle for the best results. A fatigue wall jump is like a regular wall jump, but you start closer to the wall and you don't use slide jumping. To understand this technique, you have to understand what a fatigue jump is. A fatigue jump is basically everything you do after your first jump. It is that awkward half-height jump you do when you're trying to jump several times in a row without letting your character catch up. This happens because the jumps are too close to the first jump and some time has to pass before you can perform a regular jump again. But here's the thing, fatigue wall jumping actually takes advantage of this mechanic. So to perform a fatigue wall jump, you need to combine that fatigue jump with a wall jump. In order to do this, you want to jump and then jump towards the wall to quickly start a mantle. Then you let go of your analog stick once you start mantling and then jump off of the wall. So the order is jump, jump forward, which is now your fatigue jump, and then jump off of the wall. Again, jump, jump forward, jump. I've said jump way too many times in this video. This movement technique is very useful in a tight 1v1 gunfight as it doesn't require a run-up, 
and makes you very evasive to your opponents. You could be fighting an opponent next to a wall and BOOM! You're at an angle to their left. There are so many other applications of this technique in Apex and with enough practice, it won't take much time to execute during fights. Ceiling surfing is one of the movement techniques that came when Octane's pad was added to the game. You can use this technique to basically ride along the ceiling with the momentum from your jump pad. This only works on relatively smooth ceilings. Nonetheless, here is how you do it. Ensure that your jump pad is placed under a ceiling that you want to surf on, then run towards your jump pad. Once you hit the pad and you're in the air, hold your forward input in order to surf on the ceiling for the entire duration of the jump. You can also use your jump after surfing the ceiling to get a little bit of a jump boost. Not sure how useful that would be in a gunfight, but there you go. And of course we have melee padding. As the name implies, you'll need Octane's jump pad for this. And you want to hit your melee button right next to the jump pad to get super high into the air. And you can do this over and over again until your pad breaks. If you move your stick in a direction right after the melee but before hitting the jump pad, you will be sent in that direction. I recommend the backwards direction because it is the most useful. This saves you time that otherwise would have been spent going around the jump pad if you want to go in any other direction. Which is especially useful if you're being chased. And there you have it, you can now go on to terrorize the lobbies with your rotational aim assist and newfound movement techniques. You see, what makes movement useful isn't each technique on its own, but the combination of movement techniques that provide insane utility and a unique experience for the player. But all of this insane movement would mean nothing if you didn't have any game sense, so make sure to check out the video on the screen to learn my decision making in my solo to master series. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all tomorrow.